We gather at the Lord's house to worship. It is, it is necessary to focus on our minds, our hearts, and our attention on Him. He has allowed us to assemble in this place that we might worship together. It's an honor to stand before you on this Palm Sunday. We're grateful that you have joined us here at Memorial Presbyterian Church in person and those that are viewing online. You can find our worship bulletin online at mpcclt.org and follow along with us. Hear the call to worship. Foretold in Zechariah 9th chapter, 9th verse, Palm Sunday celebrates Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, where the proud of people laid out branches to honor him as king. In true humility, Jesus rode over those branches in Jerusalem, not on a magnificent 
once again as we gather for this time of worship and appreciation to our Savior for, for what he has done and what he will do for us. In this season leading up to Easter, we're reminded once again of the importance of taking time to reflect on the goodness of God. If we haven't in this church, if we just please stand so that we may recognize you.
start by swearing we do pass it up in peace. God has graciously, graciously received us, forgiven us, and loved us. Let us practice grace with each other and love and share the peace of Christ. May the peace of Christ be with you. Hear the invitation to offering. Should we receive and never give? The Savior died that we might live. His life on Calvary, he gladly gave. I've sent for souls to save. The more you give, the more he gives to you. Amen.
sin, and shame, and to darkness, despair, and death. We trust in you, O oh Lord. We trust in you alone. Deliver us now, we pray, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I omitted one announcement, and that is all parents are asked to bring your children to church at 10 a.m. on Easter Sunday morning, gather in the sanctuary.
you gave your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. And God, here we are today, remembering the sacrifice you made for us, even while we were yet sinners, you died for us. So God, we say thank you for all your many blessings. And if we had 10,000 tongues, we could not thank you enough for all of your goodness. But since you only gave us one tongue individually, God, I just want to cry out this morning to say thank you for all your mercies. Thank you for your grace, God. Thank you for giving us peace when we were confused and had no understanding of what's going on in our lives. Thank you for that kind of peace that reigns on our lives. Thank you, O oh God, for making ways out of your ways. Thank you, O oh God, for giving us from point A to point B, God. Thank you for just the movement of our bodies that's still clothed in our right minds to know that Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Oh God, hear our prayer this morning. Hear the deepness of our hearts. Hear our family's prayer, our children's prayer, our elders' prayer. God, hear our prayer. And God, I truly don't know what to say or how to pray. But you said in your word, God, that when we don't know what to say, your spirit, your Holy Spirit, we intercede on our behalf and you will pray for us. So God, we thank you this morning for praying for us. In the mighty name of Christ, we pray and let us fight the Lord's prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This time we will have the prayer of the whole nation. O oh Lord, open our hearts and minds to receive the blessing of the Holy Spirit as the scriptures are read and our sermon is given. May we, may, may we receive your word with joy. And the people said, Amen. 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 I want to share with you this morning at the moment of sharing the sermon. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21. It is a narrative. There's no way I can preach the whole narrative. But I ask you for your prayers as I try to move myself through this chapter 21. It is a very important chapter as we come together today to celebrate Palm Sunday. Most Bibles have the triumphant entry titled at the top of this chapter, if you have one of those good, expensive Bibles. Amen, somebody. <laughs> Mine say triumphant entry. But the question is, was it a triumphant entry? entry? Uh, maybe on the people's part, because they were cheering Christ, praising God, calling him Hosanna. But for Christ, it was a sad day. It was a sad day. He had cavalry in his view. He has death in his view. And so as we read this morning, I just want to read enough to get us an idea as to where we're going this morning. I'd like to begin, if you would, from the prophet, uh, verse 5, that this prophecy is being fulfilled 500 years after Zechariah had written it. It says, Matthew chapter 21 and verse 5. 500 years before Christ, this prophecy is now being fulfilled by the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. The words go like this, the word of God. Tell the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you, lowly.
sitting on a donkey, a coat, the fall of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the coat, laid their clothes on them, and sat him on them. And a very great multitude, a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Luke, Gospel, John, Gospel, I believe, says palm branches. Then the multitude, in verse 9, said, the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried, saying, cried out, saying, Hosanna! to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We're going down to verse 12. Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who brought, bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, It is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Verse 14, then the blind he came to him in the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying out in the temple and saying, Hosanna, the son of David. They were indignant and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes, have you never read it? Out of the mouth of babies, nursing infants, you have perfected praise. The word of God for the people of God. Be we now have the hymn of preparation, majesty, worship. His Majesty, the African American Hymnal, number 171.
Again, I want to share with you the word of God from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21. Let us pray. Oh God, you said in your word that faith comes by hearing, and hearing the word of God. And I pray, oh God, give us all ears to hear and hearts to receive as what the Spirit is saying to us, the body of Christ. For truly, oh God, you know exactly what we need at this moment and at this time. So speak to us, O oh God, that we may be more like you. And pray, O oh God, that the words of the mouth and the of my heart will be acceptable in thy sight. In the name of Jesus Christ, we come to pray. Amen. Amen. You notice in your order of service uh, the title of the sermon. I got that from verse 10, Matthew chapter 21 and verse 10. I may have said that in the time of sharing it, but here's what it says in verse 10. And when he had come to Jerusalem, when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? Who is this? Can you say that with me? Who is this? My brothers and my sisters, would you say, agree with me this morning, that pride is a pinnacle or peak? When you do something, when you do something so well, most people will praise you. And your thought just might be because they praise you for doing something good, it might be you say to yourself, I've arrived. That's pride, my brothers and sisters. And after all, that's what we want, isn't it? To reach the height of perfection. And whatever we set our goal in life and to be proud of, our ultimate accomplishments, it's okay. That's human nature. We are created in the image of God, but we still have flesh overtones even after our conversion. Not all flesh reactions are bad. Pride in our work can drive us to use our talents to help others reach the same goal. Many an entrepreneur have shared their knowledge as a gift to the world. But pride in one's achievements can also be detrimental. Proverbs 16 and 18 says, and it warns us, that pride for destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. It can trip us up and turn us toward our own demise. Somebody ought to say amen right there. It's better, says Proverbs 16 19. To be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the small with the pride. Pride is best if it's tempted down by humility. Can I get a witness? What does this have to do, preacher? The palm side. I'm glad I felt that question. received more praise than when he made his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. But the question is, the praise was coming more from the people because they thought they were now getting their king. They had been waiting a long time, 2,000 years, for somebody to overtake Rome and Caesar. The usual condemners took a back seat on this day, church, to the cross believe that Jesus was the Messiah, that he was the king. But I believe they misunderstood that what kind of king he was. I believe he saw death in chapter 21. He saw Calvary. And how would you respond? Knowing you only have seven days to live. 
Six days, if you would, if Palm Sunday was on Monday. Knowing that you left the doctor's office and said you got seven more days to be here. How can you respond knowing that death is knocking on your door? I, I believe Jesus did not see what the people saw. It was the people who felt like the victory had been won. But, but I've come to learn that, that to be triumphant is knowing that the battle is over. Hallelujah, somebody. When Saul and David they went out and fought the Philistine, the Bible tells us in 1 Samuel that, that when the battle was over, uh, David was, and Saul was coming to the city, and, and the people began to say, David killed 10,000, but Saul killed 1,000. And Saul became jealous because David had killed no men in him. To be triumphant is to know the battle is over, but Jesus had not gotten to what he wanted to do. Because the victory was at cross. <laughs> I wish I had a witness here. According to history, when Jerusalem swelled to more than two million inhabitants, all anxious to offer their annual Passover sacrifice. Jesus had been going to this sacrifice year after year. Somewhere now, he's about 33 years and a half, and he see Calvary. The Bible says that the multitude went before him and followed him. He had people in front of him and behind him. And I've come to learn that, that, that when you are crowded with people in front of you and behind you, and even today there's something about a crowd. Hallelujah, somebody. Yesterday my wife and I, she was absent today because of the trip we took yesterday. Went up to Boston Salem State University. Our first, second granddaughter was a separate into Zeta Phi Beta. Uh, she's on her way to be a nurse. And the crowd, they told us to get that free program started at seven. How to do something? I mean, what kind of security they got going on? <laughs> oh my God. So the family got to be in line. The public got to be in line. And only 750 people can come into the facility. And we made our way up there about 2 o'clock. And about 4 o'clock, we were hungry, tired of standing. And I ain't there, somebody. And, and it was just a mess. I ain't there, somebody. Uh, to, the point, to the point where I couldn't get my wife to come to church this morning. Amen, <laughs> But there's something about a crowd. Amen, somebody? And I've come to learn that in every crowd, you got what I call tables. Amen. I'm from the country. Amen. Down in Union Town, Amsterdam County. Amen. I grew up chicken and turkey. Then. And when we sat around grandma's table, we had good manners sitting around the table. Whatever. There was potatoes. When there was potatoes at the table, we say we had those tables. Amen. Can you pass those tables, please? God have a witness here. Amen, somebody. But, but those folks who got it going on, they said potatoes. <laughs> Y'all might want to say amen up in here this morning. But every crowd has its caters. The Bible says there were multitude behind him. Remember now, there's over a million people at this Passover event, this palm event, this passion event. They were behind him and front of him. And in every crowd, you're going to have spectators. Amen. I'm about to fall in the house. Every crowd. I'm not talking about that Jesus crowd. Every crowd you go in, you always go have some spectators. Amen. I'm about to bring it on home. You're going to have spectators in the church. Wish I had a witness here. You're going to have some spectators. Well, there's five more people that all going to be spectators. I wish I had a witness here. Then also you're going to have some commentators. Amen. Commentators. They, they want to comment on everything. And never do nothing. Are y'all still in here? <laughs> Amen. Spectators, commentators, and then you got your dictators. Oh my God. My way or no way. Amen. If you don't go my way, hit the highway. Amen, somebody. You got, got one, you got dictators. Amen. This, this time of election, I'm going to hold Oh my God. I'll tell my son about yesterday's program. I said, why is everybody 
Amen. Sweet potato. Oh my goodness. They'll be right there for you. Amen, somebody. Let me move on here. Y'all be quiet. Listen, my brothers and sisters. Every crowd has you. That kind of praise, when you praise those who are those good sweet potatoes, that kind of praise can have a serious effect on any man or woman. And this crowd is praising Jesus. It might cause a person to rest on his laurels and enjoy the accolades being thrown at him, but that expression rests on your laurels, which, by the way, church dates back to the original Greek Olympic Games, also suggests a decline into laziness and lack of application. In other words, church, too much praise from those who praise you can make you take a chill pill if you are not careful. Can I get a witness? But not for Jesus. Of course, not for Jesus. All the praise in the world would not deter Jesus from his course, even though he was made flesh and dwelt among us. He was still God and still full of grace and truth. Can I get an amen? His triumph from Egypt to Jerusalem would have turned many a man's head, but not Jesus. The very next day, Jesus was back at work. I must do the work, John 9, 4 says. I must do the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Jesus knew his time on earth was far spent, and he could have taken a breath, but there was still work to be done. The path of Calvary was short, but there was more miracles to perform and more judgment to be handed down. And church, and that's what I want to focus on on this Palm Sunday. How did Jesus react to all
I wish I had a 
Oh, yeah. 
Septuagint of the, or the Greek translation, the one priest and the scribe used most often. David's psalm said that God used his children to show off his strength. Jesus said that God used his children to perfect his praise. You see, when he was riding that donkey, he was showing that he was humble because if he wanted to be above himself, he would have rode a horse. But he rode a donkey to show his humility, show that he was a burden bearer. I wish I had a witness here. And then it didn't take me found out the children were giving him praise. It was a perfected praise. It's the strongest weapon we have against the enemy called sin. But I like what the message Bible says. It says, from the mouth of children and babies, I'll furnish a place of praise. I'll furnish a place of praise. Praise is not just on Sunday morning. Praise is not just one day a week. When you know you're not your own. When you know you've been bought with Christ. God will make a place in you through the power of the Holy Spirit. That if you can clap, you can do all that stuff, but it's time you won't.
riding that donkey. He was looking for Calvary. He saw death in your view. And God, we thank you this morning for your death, your burial, and your resurrection. Because one of these days when God we too shall rise. Because this is not our home, we just pass it through. We got our eyes on the bigger prize. We got our eyes on your kingdom. We got our eyes on your house. A house not made by man's hands, but a house made by the Father. Because in your house there are many mansions. Oh God, keep our eyes on the prize. And knowing that you are who you say you are. King of kings, Lord of all, to the alpha and the omega, you are the beginning and the end. You are the same God today as you were on yesterday. God, hear us this morning in our soul need desire. In the name of Christ, we come and pray that people say amen. 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 And amen.
say thank you. And oh, how sorry you are that you died for the sins of the world. To the stain of death. Now may the same grace of our Lord's crucified and risen again, Savior, by the power of God's Holy Spirit, go with all of us today, tomorrow, even forevermore. And the people of God, the redeemed of the Lord, those who have only been bought with the price. Say amen. Amen. amen.